developer's geographic location informs much more of their choices than many might expect. In 2015, Zynga Senior Vice President Mark Skaggs told Kotaku that gamers didn't care where games were made or who made them, and while Zynga is infamous for operating in entirely data-driven ways, I don't agree with that assertion. Players are capable of recognizing patterns not only when an individual has contributed to a project, but the signs of a game's geographic origin are distinct and detectable throughout the game's runtime. Japanese games, for example, will often contain rather weak writing, but will exhibit incomparable levels of polish throughout all functional aspects. Even within Japan, a Square Enix game is distinctly different to one produced by Atlas. These patterns are present throughout the world, and audiences have had many opportunities to explore American, Asian, Australian, and European developed games to absorb their traits and discover their quirks. African games, however, have been absent until very recently. The African continent is the second most populous continent on Earth, with approximately half a billion more people living there than in Europe, the third most populous. Due to internal political strife and extreme external influence, the African nations have been massively hindered in terms of developing themselves and lifting their people out of poverty. Fortunately, as time goes on, there are many African populations who are able to participate within the world's economy, providing services that wouldn't have been reasonable previously, considering that reliable sources of food and clean drinking water hadn't been available. In the past, the hugely diverse people of the continent weren't so destitute and weren't forced to solely subsist. Philosophy and art were widespread across many peoples, and a significant set of mythologies were able to exist. These mythologies were the primary inspiration for Kuro'o Games' 2016 game, Orion, Legacy of the Kori Odan. Cameroon has only been an independent nation since 1960, and throughout that time has had a number of turbulent political issues come forward. For the first 20 years of independence, Cameroon struggled with nepotism and corruption, which impacted the daily lives of the citizens in particularly damaging ways. The leadership changed during the 80s, but there has been internal conflict ever since. Fortunately for those living in Uanda, the violence is mostly at the Nigerian border, and the people of the city can operate businesses without worry. That being said, Kuroo Games had attempted to get going in the early 2000s, but weren't able to acquire the capital they needed. A decade later, they did succeed. In 2012, Kuroo Games began gathering employees and designing Orion. Every person they hired was an amateur, and the company had to train many of the people to work digitally. The studio built Astral Engine 3 in the process, an amalgamation of RPG Maker, Mugen, and UbiArt's 2.5D engine used for the recent Rayman games. Kuro'o were massively ambitious with Orion, and for the most part they greatly succeeded. The game is gigantic, there are four continents to explore, each is filled with its own unique population, there is a huge variety of enemies, and Enzo Koryodan is one of the most capable fighters I have ever seen in a game. He has 63 special attacks, a handful of combos with a variety of finishes, and Irene can be called into battle like a Marvel vs. Capcom assist to offer even more options within combat. Who's playing? Oh, this is yeah, I can tell by the There are characters who all have different perspectives on the main plot, animated fight scenes, a gear system, quests with choices, there are 160 Steam achievements. 
These alone are enough for me to be thoroughly impressed with Orion. And I'll get into more detail later on, but there's an issue that I should really get out of the way before I go further. First and foremost, I really enjoyed this game. As a first time effort from a studio that had to teach its staff to code, it's unbelievably good. The narrative is excellent and the world feels alive. The combat is great and I only managed to get it to crash once. But there are a lot of problems. The game is riddled with tiny technical issues. There aren't a lot of assets changing between screens and yet the loading times can be fairly long. Late into the game, some screens have a chance to load poorly, which breaks the game's performance. I did also encounter invisible enemies and a lot of problems with the text, although the text problems may be more localization based than development based. Cameroon is a primarily French speaking country and Kuro'o games had to get the text translated on a tiny budget that unfortunately didn't afford them a quality service. These issues might be present within the French text, but I cannot confirm. The game's balance is shattered by the item system, and enemy AI can be abused to break that balance even further. Some of the writing is also very weak, as though the writers didn't check through each other's work to see if something needed some extra attention. A similar issue with the tone is also present, although this may be due to the reality of the writing staff's everyday life and my perspective of that. And finally, some of Enzo's sprites are in a much lower resolution, and they seem to only appear during dramatic scenes where the game is trying to be taken seriously. Again, I want to stress that I intend to encourage more development by Kuro'o, and any other developer whose voice has not yet been heard within the video game space. Games offer a uniquely immersive experience that I think more groups should be able to utilize for their art. So what does Kuro'o Games' art involve? Enzo Koryodan and his wife Erin are traveling the world in order to learn more about themselves as well as acquire additional strength so that they may return to their home and take it back from an invading force. This involves going to the four major continents and confronting the realities of each location. Strong reactions to the realities can cause an Orionic awakening within Enzo cementing a trait as a pillar for his overall character. Enzo's anger regarding the brutal injustice he encounters awakens one of these pillars. And as a result, Enzo gains new combat abilities based on this anger. Erin is not initially sensitive to Orion, but can inherit Enzo's abilities thanks to her suit. The pair travel to the leaders on each continent and attempt to gain their support for an attack against their invaders but must complete some tasks for them in order to gain their trust. These involve traveling to other locations and combating insurgent forces, taking down slave trades, and infiltrating corrupt organizations to destroy them from within. Exploration and combat are the primary gameplay activities, although there are occasional puzzles and very minor platforming sections. Both primary activities are meaty enough to be entertaining for the length of the game, so the lack of gameplay types isn't a concern. While the exploration sections occur within a 2.5D space, the combat sections are exclusively 2D. The combat functions similarly to a spectacle fighter, in that there are generally a large number of enemies to battle, and Enzo's combat style encourages juggling into large combos and devastating finishes. Initially, Enzo uses his spear to combine attacks against enemies, which can be done on the ground or in the air. There are launchers to get enemies into the air, as well as a few special moves that offer a small zoning tool or a finishing attack. Enzo can activate an Orion to access attacks that are more impactful, but cost a resource called AP. Erin can also participate in battles, appearing briefly to cast a spell of some kind before disappearing again. Erin is a consistent source of healing, but she also must spend resources to appear and cast. There's also blocking, a dodge, and activatable items for the player to use too. Orions have elemental effects that some enemies resist or take additional damage from. Some Orion spells only activate when specific conditions are met. And there are a ton of bosses to encounter with their own Orionic abilities. 
This combat system is immensely deep, and yet it never feels overwhelming. I had more than enough buttons on my controller to use anything I needed at any time. In fact, I think one of the face buttons was never used. There are some issues with balance, mostly that the game is too easy, and being able to use items in hit-stun doesn't help. And there are a few AI problems, but nothing severe. I'm going to get much more specific later on, but I will urge anyone to play this game and see just how unbelievable the combat is for themselves. Orion, Legacy of the Koryodan, is entirely hand-drawn and filled with a collection of various artistic styles. The characters primarily have a simplified realism style that mainly shifts between poses instead of having a high quantity of animated frames. They're quite jerky as a result, but the whole game has an inherent style that feels unique. It almost looks like amateur animations from Newgrounds, particularly the animated fight scene choreography. Occasional low resolution Enzo sprites are present, but they are limited to only this character. But there is an excellent style across all of the characters. The backgrounds are fantastic throughout, filled with details that add so much to the identity of each area. There are so many different environments to see, and while the various cities Enzo and Anodine travel to throughout their adventures are functionally similar, they are all immediately identifiable. The quantity of backgrounds is astonishing, and all of them are excellent pieces. The music is rather limited in quantity, sadly. The same songs appear often, and while they are well arranged and benefit the overall presentation, I can't help but wish there was more music. The rest of the sound is great, the combat sounds have satisfying impact, and the callouts help keep track of whether something has happened correctly or if it failed. With all of that laid out, it's surprising that this game has performance issues. Loading is a significant challenge for the game, with load times, load errors and load failures being issues throughout the game. I suspect the engine is a primary contributor to this, as the combination of pieces that don't directly link into each other is probably causing more problems than can be seen. RPG Maker for the exploration, UI and conversation clearly functions well, but transitioning to a combat or platforming room feels like one driver got out of the car and another had to get in. Not only does the game have to load all of the assets it was transitioning to, it also has to load an entire engine to accommodate those assets. My Unity experience has me questioning whether this was really the best method for the game to use. In Unity, these systems could run parallel to each other without issue, and optimizing for loading is comparatively simple. Whether Unity is available in Cameroon is something I can't confirm, but since I know Kuroto Games are making a sequel to Orion, I hope they have transitioned into a more capable engine. Switching to Unity might also improve the tools for translation. Some text boxes have placeholder information within them, where there should be speech, and the command used to colour the text is visible when the text is scrolling. I wasn't entirely aware of this while playing, but something about the coloured text scroll caught my attention whenever it appeared. My final technical complaint is the translation. While it doesn't often devolve into nonsense, there are many instances where the text is incorrect or just sloppy. Spelling and grammatical errors abound, but I am thankful that it was translated at all. My French has been non-existent for more than a decade now, so I wouldn't have been able to play otherwise. That would have been a greater crime. These issues aside, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is where Orion shines. Combat swerves out of the RPG and into a 2D fighting game style. While there aren't complex inputs to engage some attacks, there are input methods the player can learn throughout the game. I think holding the attack button and releasing for a launching attack is a good inclusion, as it makes those attacks feel like they're going to hit harder. Enzo and Irene have multiple resources that they can spend in a vast number of ways. Stamina is used for projection, basically small range teleports that allow Enzo to cover short distances quickly and Irene the ability to briefly occupy the combat space before teleporting away to safety. Stamina is recovered by resting or eating certain foods and having too little prevents those abilities from being used. Ability points are used for casting 
Most of the game's magic is based within Enzo's available Orions, elemental aspects of his character that are manifested in a variety of ways. Irene's magic set is inherited from Enzo, but she cannot cast the same spells that he can. For example, my favourite of Erin's spells is this big fireball that slowly moves across the arena. The fireball beats most other spells and deals a significant chunk of damage to the enemies it hits. An excellent tool for buying space for Enzo to recover. Enzo's fire spells do not include this fireball. Instead, Enzo's abilities are more focused on keeping the enemies in the air where they are vulnerable. In total, Enzo has access to 21 different types of magic, which are all derivatives of his four main pillars. The player will eventually gain the ability to combine Orions into new Orions that sometimes add a new lightning effect to Enzo's earth spells, or unlock brand new abilities that weren't available before. Each new Orion has its own ultimate legacy, a super spell that often has screen wiping capabilities. These must be charged through using other spells in combat so the player can't load into a battle and spam screen clears until they win. During the third quarter of the game, another character joins the party and the player can use their attacks in a similar fashion to Erin's. This game is bursting with bosses. There's about a boss fight per hour that steadily increases in boss capability as the hours pass. Unfortunately, while their capability increases, the bosses don't really become more difficult. The player is able to equip up to four items to be quickly used during combat that restore any of their missing resources. They can also access the inventory menu and use the items from there. While in hit stun, while within an attack animation, pretty much at any point during gameplay. Stocking up on food is highly encouraged before every excursion and it makes the game far too easy. Dying is almost never a threat and even then there are combat revive items to find throughout the game, so death isn't even a hindrance. Free use of healing is a huge balance problem. It's difficult to fail when Enzo's health is not only his health bar but also all of the items in the player's inventory. Strangely, Erin's healing spell is an excellent remedy to this. She summons a healing orb that won't move and heals over time so long as Enzo is standing near enough to it. Enemies can push Enzo out of the way and prevent the healing from occurring. They can push Erin away while she is casting the spell too, so the player has to be mindful when looking for somewhere to use this spell. Some bosses do have attacks that would prevent Irene from casting this spell, as well as fully kill Enzo if they hit, which makes using the healing items mandatory in these instances, which may be a reaction to this gameplay style, I'm unsure. Something that is consistently fantastic throughout Orion is the narrative. While it initially refuses to deviate from the hero's journey formula, the latter half of the narrative broadens and the theme of the world being much larger than a single island is embodied by the story itself. Enzo is due to marry Erin, but doubts that he is ready to become the king his country needs. After some deliberation, he concludes that it's best to try and fail than never to try at all. The wedding proceeds smoothly until a citizen sounds the alarm for intruders. Enzo goes to investigate when a sudden invading army arrives and storms the city. Enzo hurries back to the palace where the army has already taken position. After fighting his way through, with some assistance from Namar, Enzo's combat tutor, Enzo makes it back into the palace where the force's leader is waiting. Garba, Erin's brother, and now Enzo's brother-in-law has come to take the throne. Stating that Enzo's understanding of the world is far too limited for him to be a successful king. They fight, and while Enzo was able to defeat Ngarba, the rest of the city is taken by the army, and the king and queen of Zamar are forced into exile. From this point on, Enzo and Erin must travel the world to become stronger themselves, as well as acquire military aid from the other leaders in order to return to Zamar and retake their city. Throughout their adventure, Enzo and Erin encounter the harsh realities of the world 
that they hadn't come into contact within Zamar. Slavery, extortion, corruption, military invasion, and colonialism are all things that Zamar has been free of throughout its history, and yet they're rampant throughout the rest of the world. One nation, the owner of the mightiest military, is actively pursuing favors from other nations in order to achieve their goal of orionically awakening every person in the world, even if they aren't orionically aware. This is the driving force throughout the back half of Orion, and it raises some moral questions. Can you enact change upon someone who isn't ready for it? Should forcing people to ideologically conform as a means to end violence be accepted? Should one person have the power to change everyone's lives? Should the whole be punished for the actions of the few? Enzo and Arin must seek to answer these questions quickly before the Bajars acquire the ability to enact their intention. So how could I say that the writing is weak when I enjoyed the narrative so much? The answer lies in the things characters actually say to one another and how information is conveyed to the player. While not as trope-ridden as folklore, Orion is not hesitant to have characters say something reductive, vague, or cliched. Arin starts to explain things to Enzo, as if her understanding of the world, or Orion's, is somehow more advanced than his. Unless Enzo is especially inobservant, their experience should be the same. Characters also embark on explanation campaigns from time to time, erupting information to add unnecessary origin stories to things that don't benefit from being explained. New writers have a tendency to justify all of the choices they make, and learning that forcing the reader through a bunch of explanations isn't necessary is one of the most visible lessons a writer can learn. Trust the reader to understand. They probably will. Of course, these mistakes are inevitable for a studio as young as Kuro'o, and they should only improve from here. According to their social media pages, Kuro'o have been working on a sequel to Orion, with significantly more resources than they had during production of the first game. They've been releasing comic books, as well as a few mobile titles in the meantime, so their skills have been advancing since Orion's release. Another opportunity to delve into the world of Orion would be excellent, and I'm eagerly anticipating another great game. I went into Orion Legacy of the Koryodan with next to no expectations, and I was thoroughly impressed the entire time. For a studio located in a place that doesn't make creating games the easiest practice, staffed by people who are unfamiliar with the process of working digitally, to produce a game as ambitious as Orion is a difficult feat to conceive, and for that game to be as incredible as it is. I'm sorry, Mark Skaggs, but who made Orion Legacy of the Koryodan, and where it was developed, is such an important part of the story that I don't believe it would be anywhere near as good if someone else had made it. I'll be returning to a special developer next time. Return to a kingdom I should have a while ago.